Hey everyone, our second mini lecture is going to be about Cartesian vectors and the addition and subtraction, uh, subtraction of Cartesian vectors. So, for our second mini lecture objectives, students will be able to represent a 3D vector in Cartesian coordinate system, find the magnitude and coordinate angles of a 3D vector, and add vectors and forces in 3D space. Now, there are a lot of applications on this subject, since many problems in real life involve 3D dimensional space. So uh, how will you represent each of the cable forces in Cartesian vector form in order us to uh, add them all together and see if this hook can actually take the weight of the car? Another application is given the forces in the cables, how will you determine the resultant force, okay, acting on this point D on top of this tower. So let's see how. First of all, let's introduce a unit vector. For a vector A with a magnitude of A and the unit vector is defined as U of A is equal to A vector or bold, divided by a. The characteristics of a unit vector is that its magnitude is one, is dimensionless, and it points in the same direction as the original vector a. As you know, the unit vectors in the Cartesian axis system are i and j and k. They are the unit vectors along the positive x and y and z axes respectively. So, Let's get to know some 3D Cartesian vector terminologies. Consider a box with the sides AX, AI, and AZ meters long. So if I have AX, AY, and AZ, the vector A can be defined as AXI plus AYJ plus AZK meters, this vector I. The projection of vector A on the XY plane is called A hat. And the magnitude of this projection, a hat, okay, on the x, y, z, x, y plane, is found by using the same approach as 2D vectors. Basically, a hat is equal to the square root of a x squared plus a y squared. And the magnitude of the position vector a can now be obtained as a hat squared plus a z squared square root which is equal to AX squared plus AY squared plus AZ squared. So basically, if we want to represent a vector in 3D space like A, we break it down uh, into two steps. First of all, we break it down the A components on the Z axis and on the A hat axis. And A hat break it down again, which is our second step to the X axis and Y axis. Adding them all together gives us our A vector in our 3D X, Y, Z axes. Now, the direction or orientation of vector A is defined by the angles alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay, these are the angles measured between the vector A and the positive X, Y, and Z axes respectively. There's a range of values for these angles and it's from zero to 180 degrees. Using uh, tri triagonal direction cosines, we can find them using these formulas, cosine alpha, which is equal to AX over A, and cosine beta, which is equal to AY over A, and cosine gamma, which is AZ over A. Now these angles are not independent. They must satisfy the following equation cosine squared alpha plus cosine squared beta plus cosine squared gamma is equal to one. And the resultant can be derived from the definition of the coordinate direction angles and the unit vector. So recall the formula for finding the unit vector of any position vector, which is A vector over A, okay, bold A over A. And this is equal to AX over A I plus AY over AJ plus AZ over AK. Looking back to the direction cosines, we can write the unit vector as cosine alpha I plus cosine beta J plus cosine 
gamma k. So basically this vector a we can represent its orientation okay using three angles alpha beta gamma these angles are basically the angle between this vector and the x-axis angle one alpha the angle between the vector a and the y-axis is beta and the angle between vector a and the z-axis is gamma these three angles which we call direction cosines will give us the exact direction or orientation of a vector a now addition and subtraction of vectors once individual vectors are written in cartesian form it's easy to add and subtract them the process is essentially the same as when 2d vectors are added so for example if we have vector a and b Okay, if we want to add them together, same thing as the 2D vectors, we take all the I components and add them together, take all the J components and add them together, and take all the K components and add them together to get our resultant vector. Or if we want to subtract vector A minus vector B, we subtract the I components together, subtract the Y components together, and subtract the Z or K components together. Now, here's some important notes I want you to carefully consider. Sometimes 3D vector information is given as magnitude and the coordinate direction angles, or the magnitude and projection angles, or cosine angles. You should be able to use both these types of information to change the representation from the vector form to the Cartesian form. Cartesian form being the IJK convention. Now, let's take an example. We have a force F, which is applied to this hook. Force F is shown in the figure and it makes a 60 degrees angle with the XY plane, okay? Uh, and as you can see, there's a 45 angle between the projection of the F a vector on the xy plane and the x plane the resultant force in the cartesian vector form is what we have to find out first of all our plan is going to be using geometry and trigonometry to find f in the cartesian vector form as we just saw before so the first step is to resolve this vector f okay into the z axis and into the f hat xy axis basically fz is going to be 100 times sine 60 degrees and our f hat is going to be 100 times cosine 60 degrees but that's not all the second step is we have to break down the f hat into the xy components so our fx is going to be f hat cosine 45 okay which we found out f hat is 50 times cosine 45, 35.36. This is the fx component. And our fy is f hat 50 pounds times sine 45. Now that we have our x and y and z components, we can write our f in our Cartesian coordinates fx times i minus fy times j plus fz times k. And that's all for our second mini lecture.